HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello, and welcome to another edition of HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, two multi-sport Hiller athletes signed up to play football at a Division I college, Massachusetts Governor Charlie Baker was in town, the new Hopkinton High School TV Club produced their first newscast, and we have the latest Hiller sports highlights. But first, the principal search for Elmwood's next principal has been narrowed down to two candidates. The school committee narrowed down the search to fill the principal position at Elmwood School after former principal David Youngberg left to take a position in the school administration central office last September. The two candidates include Kathleen Gerber, who is currently working in the Franklin School System, and current interim principal Ann Carver. The school committee hosted a public question and answer session with the candidates in the Elmwood Library. I began my career 27 years ago in Maryland as a speech language pathologist. I've taught in Maryland schools, Texas schools, and Arkansas schools before being transferred to Massachusetts. I began my career here in Franklin and uh, as, a as a speech language pathologist. Uh, shifted to a team chair head teacher model and then three years ago I became assistant principal in Franklin. All right, terrific. Uh, what got you interested in the Elmwood job? The Elmwood job was very appealing to me because it was a 2-3 building. Um, I love second and third grade curriculum. It also, I was reading the school improvement plan and things that teachers were working on and the response to intervention process speaks near and dear to my heart of how do we differentiate instruction to make children successful. And also I've been working with writing trajectories and being able to talk about uh, essential questions and that seemed to align with your school improvement plan. Excellent. And uh, can you talk about some, some of your goals if uh, you get the position? Sure. My goal at first would be to come in and get to know the community because change without knowing where you are and where your vision is is never a good thing. So and my goal would be to work collaboratively to facilitate the change uh, and to do what's best for students in school. So how do we improve our writing practice? How do we improve our math practices and our ELA practices? Uh, I grew up in Holden. Uh, I have three siblings. And I've known that I wanted to be a teacher since I was a very little girl. My mom talked about it quite a bit as I was growing up, that she always knew I'd be a teacher. And I didn't disappoint her or myself. I followed my dream, went to Wheelock College in Boston, where I got an, uh, an undergrad degree as in, in, an, in early childhood. From, right from, straight from college, I started working as an elementary school teacher in Worcester where I hate to say how many years I taught school, but I did teach in Worcester for 26 years. I taught kindergarten, first grade, second grade, and third grade. Uh, as you may know, Worcester is a, is a pretty big school system, and so I had the opportunity to move around to several different schools. When you work in an environment like that, you don't have to keep reapplying for a position, but you can kind of bid for, I'd love to teach a second grade in this neighborhood, or I, I see that there's an opening in, in, in this school, so I was fortunate to be at three or four incredibly high functioning and wonderful schools where I learned a great deal. As I finished my career in teaching, um, I, I had, had been encouraged to take on some leadership roles within the school and then decided to get my math, I had a master's in education, but decided to get a second master's in leadership and administration. And so I was teaching right up until the time that I took on the role here at Elmwood School as assistant principal. I left Worcester loving my work as an educator and loving being in a classroom I didn't have a I didn't have an experience that said get out you know get out of the classroom get out of the city um, I loved every day that I was there and was offered an opportunity to come to Hopkinton which uh, leaving Worcester is kind of rare for Worcester teachers and administrators folks tend to stay for an entire career so coming here uh, was a wonderful opportunity for me 
and I was the assistant principal with David Youngberg for two years. I started my third year this this fall, and um, about the end of the first month was offered the position as interim. So I've been at it a, a little over three months, and in that time I have uh, been interim. I've learned a whole lot more about Elmwood School and about being a leader, and, and I've loved every minute of it. The next Elmwood principal is expected to be announced within the next few weeks. Turning now to election season, Massachusetts Governor Charlie Baker was recently in town to endorse Republican State Committee candidates Ed McGrath and Janet Lee and Bruno. We're here waiting for Governor Charlie Baker to come. He's endorsed Janet and I in our campaign to uh, get re-election to the Republican State Committee in the second Middlesex and Norfolk District, which includes Hopkinton. And uh, we're really thrilled that the governor thinks a lot of our work that we've done in the past and is supporting our campaign for re-election. Yes, we're very excited. I uh, have a good, really good turnout of people that have come throughout the district and other state committee folks from around the Commonwealth. So we have a really good turnout. I'm excited. I think um, Ed and myself have done, you know, we, you know, we I don't think anybody could work harder, uh, whether we're recruiting candidates, helping the kids. Um, we have one of the uh, young kids that's here tonight. He's the president of Framingham High School. And he started a Republican club at Framingham High School, which is, we're, we're very happy. Very excited about we're very that. excited. We're trying to get some of the young kids in. Um, we are working on some state rep candidates' seats that are, that are going to be coming up. And we really believe in the governor's plan. You know, he's doing some really good things with the opiate addiction and the, the budget and the, M, the MWRA um, in the fixing the things with the tea. Uh, there's just so many different things that he's doing and we fully support him 100% and we're a team baker all the way. We are and it's because for a long time Janet and I have been telling people to get involved in government, make government better and uh, Governor Baker's first year in office proved that elections matter and who you elect to public office can improve your life if you elect the right people. All right, uh, can you talk about some of your uh, goals if you're re-elected? Well, I think the goal coming into this uh, 2016 is to get some state rep, state senate candidates elected, improve on the success we had in that area last cycle, uh, keep building the Republican Party the infrastructure. Uh, we're doing better with the door knocking. We uh, are doing better with the phone calls, voter ID. Uh, better with their candidate recruitment, and that's what it's all about, building the grassroots. But it's just not this coming election. Uh, Janet mentioned Jake Bennell, the young man who at Framingham High. It's about uh, where the Republican Party will be when he gets out of college or when he goes to work, whether it be Republican candidates then, uh, to continue the growth that we see coming now. Exactly, and I think having Governor Baker and um, Lieutenant Governor Polito, they're doing so many great things that they're really bringing people into the party, which is, you know, they're, right now they're, uh, I believe their approval rating, the numbers that came out this week were 84 and 85 percent, which is like unheard of in this kind of a blue state. Uh, but nothing lasts forever, uh, and we understand that, that this is not the final, as one of the, uh, Governor Baker, one of his favorite sayings is something that his father had said to him when he was young, that success is never final. So our goal is to build on what we have already done and try to bring more people into the party because there are a lot of people that are afraid to be Republicans in the state of Massachusetts just because of maybe some of the um, stuff that goes on nationally and they kind of want to stay out of the, the fray, And but yet they vote Republican. And you know, four years ago people used to whisper to us, oh, we voted for Charlie Baker. And well, now people come out and they proudly say that. And many of the Democrats that we know have also said the same thing. So, you know, the, the, we think that we can broaden our party by people that are unenrolled. And there are people that have a lot of Democrats that that are frankly tired of the, what's going on in their party, and they're unenrolling. So we are all welcoming them with with open arms. And I think that by being, you know, setting up a um, building grassroots, getting people into our RTCs, it's the way to 
build up and find candidates that will be willing to step up and run and to make a difference because they want to be part of the winning team that is uh, Charlie Baker and Karen Polito. So Janet and I would be very grateful if when you go to vote March 1st, you'd vote for Ed McGrath and Janet Liam Bruno for Republican State Committee. With your support, we'll continue to build on the success and opportunity that Charlie Baker and Karen Polito have given us. For pictures of the governor's appearance, check out seeninhopkinton.org. Hopkinton High School started a TV club this year, and recently they produced their first bi-weekly newscast that will air throughout the school and on HCAM Ed. Hopkinton High School started a TV club this year. The club is ran by HCAM station manager Jim Cousins. One of the projects the TV club is taking part in is a five-minute high school news broadcast that will be shown on Thursdays every other week. Hello, Hopkinton High School. I'm Chris Pomeroy, and welcome to HHS Today. This news and info program will connect you to what's happening at HHS and bring you stories on people and activities that you might not have known about. My name is Chris Pomeroy, and I've always been interested in producing film, and I've always been interested in acting on TV, so it was just kind of a perfect fit. Is there something that you uh, like doing the most so far in the TV club? Yeah. I must say the acting on camera, the anchoring was fun, but I like being behind the scenes too, seeing how everything works. The students get the opportunity to anchor, run teleprompter, as well as cameras and lighting. I got involved in the TV club because I've always wanted to be a director or producer of some sort on film in any sort of film project. Yeah. All right. Is there something that you have liked doing the most so far in the TV club? Uh, I like working the camera. That's always pretty fun. I'm Matt Bird, and I'm Will Powell with the WHS Sports Minute. In sports action last week, varsity hockey earned a playoff spot with a win over Dover Sherborne, three to one. Cam from Layson scored, and DJ Sloan got two goals. Um, I like to, I like doing the five second interview. That's that's always good. I haven't done that yet, but I did something similar to that because uh, I, I was doing something when we did when we uh, shot it here, but. Um, I did something similar. I would, we did question of the day in the middle school, and that was really fun. Awesome. Uh, yeah. How'd you like doing the sports reads out there? That was that was fun. That was a uh, that was something new. Well, I mean, I did the sports broadcasting class, but we never we uh, never did anything quite as as like this scale. The boys and girls varsity have games against Medfield on Monday and Friday against Bellingham. The swim and dive team has a meet for the TVL title on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, my name is Will Puella, and uh, I was in the broadcasting class, and Miss McFarland uh, wanted me to do this. Do you like it? Yeah, it was pretty good. Do you have a favorite part of it so far? Uh, the reading off the teleprompter was pretty cool. That's a wrap for our first HHS today. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back in a couple of weeks with a new episode. Meanwhile, if you have seen the Have You Seen This Photo, or to watch full-length versions of our segments, make sure to visit hcam.tv slash hhstv. We'd also like to hear from you. Tell us what you think of our show and what we should cover, or tell us about what you've got going on at Hopkinton High. On behalf of everyone here at HHSTV, I'm Chris Pomeroy. Good luck out there. To see more of the great work from the High School TV Club, head over to hcam.tv slash hhstv. Coming up next on HCAM News, a pair of Hopkinton Hillers signed up to play Division I football. We have the latest Hiller sports highlights, and Courtney will let you know what to expect on the HCAM channels with our HCAM Insider. A lot more ahead. Don't go anywhere. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. And by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. We are the girls from Girl Scout Troop 72969 from Hopkinton. We would like to thank Mr. Terosian for the awesome tour of the HCAM studio. If you are interested in fun and adventurous field trips, we recommend, one, to learn a Girl Scout troop. And two, visiting HCAM to see how local television is created and produced. We also want to give a shout out to Kalala Supermarket to thank Dale for our Girl Scout troop tour. And for always giving us a space to set up our cookie booth. 
Welcome back to HCAM News. Two Hopkinton Hiller multi-sport athletes reached a decision on where they will attend college, and both will be playing football at Division I schools. Two multi-sport Hopkinton Hillers signed national letters of intent to play in college. Nick Canal signed a national letter of intent to play football in the Ivy League at Cornell University out of Ithaca, New York, while state wrestling champion multi-sport athlete Josh Sokol signed up to man the trenches over at Sacred Heart University, a Division I school out of Fairfield, Connecticut, out of the Northeast Conference. I started playing football as a freshman here at Hopkinton, and um, it was an awesome experience. It's a great program. Uh, as a sophomore, I, um, I learned a lot throughout the three years here with uh, Coach Gerard. He's an awesome coach. Can't say enough about the program. I had a lot of fun. Unforgettable high school football experience and uh, taught me a lot of life lessons, made me a better man, and uh, I'm really going to miss it. All right, what made you choose uh, Cornell? Um, the education and uh, the coaching staff. I love the campus when I visited. Uh, it's a great school. Um, uh, going, uh, going to an Ivy League school is always a dream of mine, and uh, I always wanted to play football in college, so um, it was an opportunity that I couldn't turn down. And I'm really looking forward to it. All right, what are you going to be majoring in? I'm going to be majoring in uh, biological science, but I plan to minor in business and uh, pursue a career in medical science. All right, well, best of luck to you. Thank you. So my career over the years, uh, you know, coming up from freshman, JV, uh, especially with football, uh, you know, high expectations, um, expecting to get in rotation as a sophomore, expecting to play as a sophomore. Didn't quite work out, but I think it worked out all right with uh, commitment to Sacred Heart. And uh, look forward to a good four years here, and it was a great experience at this high school. And uh, just wish luck to the future kids of the program. All right, how'd you like uh, working with the coaches here? Uh, it was a lot of fun, you know, um, they kept us running, literally, and, uh, you know, particularly, and just kept us moving around and uh, kept us focused, uh, especially in the off season. Commitment to the weight room and, um, you know, the team aspect was definitely there for everyone and it was a blast. All right, what made you uh, choose Sacred Heart? Uh, just the uh, environment and the feeling I had with the program and uh, commitment and uh, the success of the program and uh, just everything about it just felt great. All right, what are you going to be majoring in over there? Criminal justice, definitely criminal justice. Uh, Got to follow in the dad's footsteps and uh, continue uh, working hard. All right, well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hiller's winter sports is getting into the final weeks of the season, and it is now time to make a push for the playoffs. A couple Hiller's teams have earned playoff spots and are now fighting to get a postseason home game advantage. Here are the latest highlights in Hiller's sports. The Hopkinton Hillers took on Ashland for the TVL championship in swimming. The meet was a mixed meet with the boys and girls team. The Hillers ended up losing by a single point due to a coach's scoring error. The boys are now 6-3 while the girls are 7-1 overall, but both teams still have a couple meets ahead, including the TVL dive meet at the Keith Tech Pool as well as postseason competition. The White Hot Hillers hockey team took on Assabet on their home ice at Navin Arena in Marlboro, and the offense once again exploded. Yeah, I guess it's a, Here's a shot and a goal by Finlayson from between the circles. It's Finlayson races in. He, he, he hits Abbott perfectly and he scores. Oh, what a pretty pass by Cam Finlayson. Will Abbott finished, and that gives the Hillers a 2-0 lead 30 seconds in to the second period. Behind the net, delinquency double team. Now Sloan with it. Oh, nice backhand shot and a goal. It's put in by Delaney. Well, Jack Sloan went behind his back. And he threw it out to Delaney, and Delaney jammed it in, and the Hillers now lead 3-0. Abbott comes and chases, he steals the puck. Takes it away from Delaney. Now Simos. Simos gets to the circle. Cross ice it goes to Dan Delaney. Delaney Arista, that's in goal! It's tipped in front. Delaney's gonna get credit for it, but it went off a defenseman and the Hillers have put their third goal here in the second period up on the board and take 
a four to nothing lead. But they look pretty solid, really. Not, oh, there's a shot and a goal in front, and Abbott puts it in to give the Hillers a five nothing lead. Oh, he was on the doorstep, right inside the circle. And a bouncing puck came to him, and he just hammered it home, except the penalty. It's a slash. Slap shot from Pickens in from the point. It's a goal. Not sure if it was tipped in front. I think Will Pickens got it. And if he did, for Will, that is his second goal of the season. And the Hillers, with a power play goal, in seven seconds. The Hillers hockey team got their fourth shutout of the season, taking down Asabet six to nothing. Will Abbott scored two goals in the victory. The Hillers followed up with a great performance as they took down Norton on the road six to two. Steven Simos netted three goals for the Hillers as the playoff bound varsity team improved to 12 and two overall. The Hillers boys basketball team split their last two games as they beat Holliston on Friday, January 29th, 59 to 45. They then fell to Medfield on the road Tuesday, February 2nd, 57 to 38. The Hillers boys now stand at six and nine, and they will need to win four of their final five games to clinch a playoff spot. The Hillers girls basketball team also split their last two as they defeated Holliston on the road 55 to 39 to officially clinch a playoff spot as they earned their 10th win of the season. The girls fell to Medfield the following game on Tuesday the 2nd 62 to 51. The playoff bound girls team now stands at 10 and 4 overall on the season. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website hcam.tv as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. If you have a Hopkinton related video, photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and thanks for tuning in.
清风。